It's hard not to fall in love with Oxborough Estate, when you catch your first glimpse of the imposing brick manor house reflected in the tranquil moat. Built by the Beddingfield family in 1482 as a statement of power, Oxborough and the family have endured turbulent times. Through religious persecution, civil war devastation, near dereliction and threatened demolition, Oxborough's story is one of survival. Step inside to discover the legacy of the sixth baronet who created much of what you see today, from the Victorian Gothic interiors to the ornate architectural additions that reflect a romantic view of Oxbrew's medieval past. Outside, the gardens are a mixture of formal and wilderness, with the kitchen garden, orchard and herbaceous border adding color and seasonal interest. And for those wanting to explore further, you can follow one of the estate's walks through woodland, along the river Gadda, and out into open meadows. The National Trust run a bushcraft camp and is being used by the Green Light Trust, which is delivering courses to benefit the well-being of young people in West Norfolk. The National Trust are carrying out pine plantation felling to allow the planting of other variety of trees. Despite its fortified appearance, Oxbrew Estate was built as a family home. It was completed in 1482 for Sir Edmund Beddingfeld and have lived here ever since, surviving the Civil War, periods of near dereliction and, in the 20th century, the threat of demolition. Built around 1482 in highly fashionable red brick, Oxbury was intended to reflect the newly acquired status of Sir Edmund Beddingfeld at the Royal Court. A rising star, he was knighted and even hosted a visit from the King and Queen. A further 100 years of royal service and patronage followed, when the Beddingfeld's fortunes flourished. Their support of Catholic Mary I in her claim to the throne brought the family unprecedented power and prestige. With the succession of Elizabeth I, the family's fortunes changed dramatically. The Act of Uniformity in 1559 outlawed Mass and it became illegal not to attend the parish church for the Anglican Rite. The Bedingfield's refusal to change their faith after the Reformation cost the family dearly, both politically and financially. The late 16th century became a time of great danger for those who didn't conform. Catholic priests were routinely tried and executed and the Catholic gentry who gave shelter to priests was imprisoned. Oxbrew Hall was put up for sale in 1951 together with most of its contents. Sybil Dowager Lady Babingfield, her daughter and her niece bought it and she gave it to the National Trust in 1952.